So when we, when we last left off, we had uploaded our app to the App Store. I showed a moment ago that there were a few examples of students that went through the whole process and you have your real app online. Now it's time to talk about a version 2. So what I'd like to do in our version 2 of our app is to add some social sharing features. The ability to connect with social media and also the ability to email from the app. Uh, so our use case scenarios here will be that I want a way for people from my app to email me, the developer. I want them to send me an email if there's a problem, if there's a question about the app. So we will see we have a plugin that will allow users to connect to us via email. And also we've got a plugin where we're able to send from the, from the app, from any app, to send a tweet, to post to Facebook, to post to actually any social network that they want that they have installed on their device. So we'll be able to connect to any social network from, from our project. I'm going to um, have you go to the web first. Go ahead and open up a web browser and we'll go do a, a search Search for the keywords um, Cordova social sharing. So search Cordova social sharing. You should get a top result. It says phone gap social sharing plugin GitHub. You'll see, you'll see it's the right one because it'll say github.com slash Eddie Verbergen, Ver, Verbergen, social sharing. So this is a developer that has out there one of the most popular plugins that accomplishes this task. <clears throat> Remember, Cordova has the ability for us to add several plugins to extend its features. It starts off with an HTML project, but via plugins we're able to add more features such as taking photos with the camera, GPS, and here, social sharing. There's also plugins for interfacing with the Bluetooth features of a device, for example. If you search for Cordova Bluetooth plugin, you'll find many of those. But we're going to use one of these, the PhoneGap slash Cordova slash Taco social sharing plugin. Click on that and it should take you to the GitHub website. Cordova plugin to share text, a file like an image, PDF, etc., or a URL, or all three via the native sharing widget. <clears throat> so if I'm, right now I've got Instagram loaded on my device here, and there's a button for me to, to share. What happens with this is it pops up and then it shows me what apps I have installed here and how would you like to share it? Would you like to share it through WhatsApp? Would you like to send an email? Would you like to do this or that? Sharing. So if I brought my iPhone today, I would see the same thing. I would load up the same Instagram app and I would click the share button. But on the iPhone, that sharing screen, that widget would be different than on Android, than on Windows Phone, etc. So the cool thing about this plugin is it will be able to no matter the device, pull up a screen to let the user share. So it has several ways to share, and the first way we'll use it is to have it be able to send an email. It'll tap into the user's email, whatever their native email client is on the device, to send an email. And that email will set it to be directed directly to us. I want to get an email from the app in the about screen or somewhere we're going to put a button there that says contact the developer so that when they click that it'll send us an email and we'll be able to control various aspects of that email but the plugin is here and it's open source so there's contributors and there's changes to it it seems that uh, three months ago there was a change to it okay so it's a pretty extensive then uh, documentation here I'm not going to read everything about it but in general um, so this is a very good plugin. I do recommend whenever there's a sort of like a donate button, donate to these developers. Maybe not buy a couple of lattes and instead donate that money over to them because these people oftentimes are working for the fun of it, for the challenge of it, 
for the internet fame of it, but a few dollars for a coffee here and there is nice sometimes. So there's a lot of documentation, but it goes on to say this plugin allows you to use the native sharing window for your mobile device. It works on Android version 2.3 and higher, iOS 6, Windows 8 and up, etc. Share text, supports sharing from the internet, locals, the local file system, so I can share something out of my WW folder. You can have it shared directly to Twitter or Facebook or other apps. It's part of the official PhoneGap build, and we'll see a little bit later also PhoneGap build, which is Adobe's implementation of Cordova. So Adobe itself is also saying this is the plugin to use. Screenshots, how does it look like on iOS, on an iPhone? You click a button, it pops up, you get the native widget there, then you, you're going to send it to Twitter. You can attach an image, it's like a tweet, then you tweet it, or you send it off to Facebook, you send it to Facebook. Uh, the sharing options are based on the, dev on the user's device. So depending on what they've got set up, then the different things will pop up. On an iPad, it might look like that. iOS 6 would look like that. On an Android device, well, if I've got all of these apps installed on my Android, it will also let me share over to Google Plus or Hangouts or Gmail or whatever. Attach photos and such and send it and Windows 8, same thing. So for all of the platforms, it'll be able to either have the user select what to share to, or we can set it directly how we want to share. And we'll do both. How to install it, we'll do this in a moment. We're going to need to install the, um, the, the code um, from the repository. Uh, instructions there, building it on phone get build, okay, usage on iOS and Android, and there's examples here. So we'll see a little bit later on, the share sheet, uh, examples here as well, sharing directly to Twitter, to Facebook, to Instagram, so very good examples, quirks, advice, and so forth. So first what we're going to do is add the ability for the user to contact us, the developer, with questions or comments about the app. In order to get that started, what we need to do is type in a command in the command prompt. So you need to open your project in the command prompt. Remember, shift right click, open command window here, we'll open it directly in the project. So in the Cordova CLI, the command line interface, the prompt, you would type Cordova, plugin, add, etc. We saw this previously when we had taco, plugin, add, Cordova dash plugin dash camera. So here it's using the generic Cordova. We don't, we don't have technically Cordova installed. We've got taco, the variation of Cordova. So we will type taco. Plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. You can copy and paste or type it. So taco space plugin space add space Cordova dash x uh, plugin dash x dash social sharing. Enter on that. It's going to connect back to the node, <coughs> back to the node mothership, and get the code. Install it in our project. My project currently has Android and browser platforms, so it's adding that feature to both. But spoiler alert: uh, testing this in the browser won't work that well. The browser is not set up to display that very well, so we will want to test it on a real device or a virtual device. This might take a moment because we're all connecting to it. The instructions further say, after running that command, you'll need to run taco prepare. So if yours finishes before mine, like this, taco prepare.
what will happen is that social sharing.js is brought into the project. There's no need to change or add anything in your HTML. You can just start using it. But you need to uh, install the plugin and then prepare it for usage in the project. So we'll wait for those to finish. We're going to create a button in the project, make the button active via JavaScript. And when, we, when the user hits the button, then it does the sharing. And the first kind of sharing that we're going to focus on is the email. So as soon as this is done, well, I guess while no, I should wait. We shouldn't edit the code while it's preparing. We need to wait. And once it's done, we'll open the index.html file. And I think what we'll do is in the about screen, in the about screen, we will add a button, contact developer. And I'm passing to Cordova, and it says there's an update available. I wouldn't doubt it. Our, our code in this lab is, is getting on and waits a little bit, but let me see how it's so doing. Okay. Code as is, and later on when you're done with the project, then update the code. You never know what happens when you update your code in the middle of the project. You may break things. Okay. Did I never press enter? Nope. Okay. So remember, this doesn't do anything until you press enter. It'll diligently not do anything until you press enter. Okay, so this is saying unknown taco man passing it to Cordova. So deep in the system, it's Cordova, but we've got the taco shell on top of it. Taco shell. So um, this is passing it in internally, and then it'll be done. And then once that's done, we will edit in Notepad the index file. Because in the, in the About screen, I want to add a new button here for contacting the developer. There we go. So no feedback, but I get the command prompt. It's done. So what I need to do is uh, open the index file in Notepad. We've got the index file open, and over at near the end of the document, at about line. 303. That's where we've got the about screen buttons for the personalization button, the directions button. We'll add a new button after that, contact the developer. So new line and we'll say contact the developer. We'll wrap an A tag around it. href to nowhere. Data role button. Data icon. I always forget if it's either mail or email. Try mail. And then ID so that we can write some JavaScript to make it active. Uh, I'll say um, ID equals BTN email. This is going to be the button that sends me, the developer, an email.
Taking a quick look under about contact the developer. Yes, so the button, so the icon equals mail. That will create a, an, a mail icon. We'll save that. That's our button. That is going to be the trigger that does things. So now we need to pull up the uh, kodika.js file to write the JavaScript to make that active. So let's open kodika.js. Let's go to the very end of the document, um, before the end of on device ready. Remember everything that we do needs to be in that function. So give yourself a new line before end of function nuke. That was the function that deleted the database completely. We will make um, an event handler for that button via J uh, jQuery. So we'll start the jQuery selector here. We'll say pound btn email. It's the name of our email button. We're selecting it in uh, jQuery on the on method so that when there's an event we can do something The event is on click. Comma, and we'll run a function fn email. Next line will define what function email means. It's a function here. Alright, so if we look at the documentation over at the developer site, there's many ways to implement the social sharing plugin. The way we're going to be using it is via the window um, object, so window dot plugins dot social sharing dot share via with a capital V email capital E this is a method this is the command share via email it's part of the social sharing object uh, notice that's all in lowercase so the developer never used camel caps there therefore there's no camel caps but there is on share via email so you just have to be careful to note no capital letter on the S for sharing. We're going to pass several arguments into the share via email method. Some of them are optional, some of them are required. Reading the documentation tells us that all of these fields are required in a specific order, but if you're not going to use one of them, you should set null. For example, this will allow us to send an email and to also CC an email and even BCC an email. 
So it can send an email directly to a person and copy the email to someone else and blind copy the email to other people. Let's say we're not going to use those fields, the CC field or the BCC field. We still have to specify null, however, in the sequence of arguments, or else it might fail. A possibility why I may want to BCC someone is um, that I'm going to set this up that this is going to send an email to me, the developer, but it could also be sending it to someone else on the team, and the user doesn't need to know that it got sent to two people. So that would be BCC. So for the moment we'll set up a um, sort of like a placeholders. Press enter a couple of times to break the those curly, uh, those uh, parentheses there. For the moment we'll write these as strings. Um, this is subject comma. I'm oh, sorry, first we'll do uh, message body. Then comes subject. <coughs> then comes square brackets two. Square brackets, quotes, cc, comma, square brackets, quotes, p, cc, quote, attachments, comma, Success, comma, fail. This pseudocode, this is not real code yet, this pseudocode are the various arguments that share via email takes. The documentation spells it out completely. But these are the different fields. Again, I'm probably not going to use BCC or even CC, but I need to put something in that field which will be null. I'm also going to make note that comment here that requires an array. So even if you're sending it to one person, you need to write the email address in an array. It requires an array of strings. Same thing with CC and BCC note here. These attachments can be internal or external attachments. If I've got a, a graphic on a web server, I would put its path in the quotes. If it's an attachment in my project, I have to um, write its path based on the on the uh, www folder. So requires www in path if local. So if I'm trying to send a picture from my images folder of my project, I need to include www slash images. Success could be in inline function, an in inline anonymous function, or a named function. So if I define uh, some function elsewhere that's, uh, that's called um, email success with a bunch of uh, steps and such uh, expressions, I could write its name there. Or if I just want to write some simple um, console output, I could have an anonymous function.
All of this is just sort of information for us. We will fill in real things in, in a moment. But this is, uh, this is the way it's set up. And notice the very last item does not have a final comma. Only each particular item in the list. All of this is, I'm going to further comment it. I'm going to comment all of these items out. This is just information for you. to show you these are the different fields I have to include in, um, in the share via email. So our concept is that a person hits that button and it's going to send us an email directly. So um, this time for real, in quotes, we'll say regarding your app, comma, right there. This is going to automatically type this in the body of the email, which the user can delete or add to. And we have the ability to do a little bit of HTML um, in the string. Not a whole lot, really. The author says it can't take very much, but I'm going to have it so that uh, the email body will appear, and then it'll say, regarding your app, break. So the next line they can start to write whatever. I can write whatever I want here, of course, but I'm starting off the the message body, the email message body for the user. Don't forget to put a comma here. The other comma is commented out. Next comes the actual subject of the email. So again, in quotes with a comma, we'll say uh, my SDCE feedback. So the subject of the email will say that. We can get creative here because as I as I get more advanced and I do this for real, I may want to put in some sort of keywords, some sort of marker in the subject, and then in my Gmail I could have various filters in play. So what I mean is that if I'm releasing a variety of of apps and I have this send the send the developer a feedback message, you know, if I mark my subjects somehow I can create a filter in, in Gmail. So that when a subject comes in with that keyword, it'll automatically get filtered to the right inbox. I'm not going to do that in this case, but um, that's an idea in the future. Using these subjects as ways to make filters in your inbox. Next line, array syntax. So it's going to be a list of possible email addresses. I could attach three email addresses here. It's going to send it to three email addresses if I wanted. But I need it in quotes to test it out. If you have the ability to fully test it on a real device, you can put a real email address. Now I'm going to put my real email address here. Um, put your own, so don't copy me verbatim. You can fully test it if you got it at your email address. Put your email. The syntax is array, square brackets, and then in quotes. If I wanted to send it to another person, comma, and then another email.com. So I can send it to multiple people at once within the to field. When you CC someone, everyone sees who else it got sent to. So I could have another array here of emails where it sends this message to me and to John Smith at SWC. Um, and so we're not going to copy this to anyone else. So we need to add null, N-U-L, L. Comma. We're not sending it to anyone else, but we need to have something in this field. With a BCC, as an example, we're going to keep BCC null as well. But as, a, as an example, I could have it here, dev at victor.com. So the user will see, because their native email is going to come up, and they're going to see, 
I'm about to send an email over to vcampus at sdccd. They're not going to see that it's also going to be sent to dev at victor.com. And again, the purpose of that would, could be that it's sent to multiple people in the organization. One is the tech support person, and one is like the marketing person in the company. But in our case, we'll just keep it null. Attachments, just to see how it works, is we're going to attach a picture with this email. In our project, remember, we've got an images folder. There's, a, there's a, an image called CE logo vert. It's the vertical logo of the college. I want to include that in the email, just as a test. It, it, we wouldn't pos pro probably not really need it. I, uh, but here, just to test it. So, in quotes, comma, we have images, slash, but we have to start from the root level of the project, not the www folder, the root level of the project. So, www slash images. The path here is starting from the root level of the project where the config XML file is and then into the www folder, and then into the images folder, and then logo dash, or ce dash logo dash vert dash ping. That graphic will be attached to, to the email. If we did not want an attachment, we, we don't ignore this field. We add null to it. Then we have, well, what happens on success and what happens on fail? We could have had, so don't type this yet, but we could have had on success email. That function would run if the email was successfully sent. We, we do not put the um, syntax with the parentheses because it would execute immediately instead of after a success. And then same thing with fail. We could have an on fail email. Then that would require that we create um, the function on success email. Uh, we'll keep it very simple because we don't really get a lot out of the success and the fail. I think it just gives you an OK in the, in the console. Nothing really special. So we'll add an anonymous function. Function close parentheses, open, close, curly brace, comma. And what the share via email method kicks back is an object result. So we'll just do some console output. And let's say something like success. Success. So the string success will be printed to the console as well as whatever that object is. And I think it's just it's just as okay. Don't forget the comma there at the end. And then fail is the same thing. Function function curly braces. It's the last item, so no final curly brace. And this one is error object. So let's say console. error object. This is just one method, but it's got a lot of options. And that's why we broke it apart into multiple lines, lines just for readability. We have the event handler, we have the button in HTML, we have the function. Now we can run it. Um, 
it be best to run it on a virtual or real device. It's not going to work very well on the browser. So in Taco, I'm going to run Taco Run Android device. And I'm also going to do ampersand, ampersand, Taco Run browser. I believe I mentioned it, but the double ampersand will execute another command after the first command executes. So I'm going to have it first um, run on my device, and then when that's done, run it in the browser. I just want to see. It. Uh, we most likely have the latest version of the plugin. Maybe it's been updated, but I don't. I don't think anything special will happen in the in the browser. Press enter on that. I'm going to launch it on a real device, and then I'm going to test it out. So that's launching on my device. I'm also going to inspect it in Chrome. All right, so I'm um, running it on my real device. I'm going to go to the About screen. I have the brand new button, Contact the Developer. That pops. I hit that, and it pops up here that it says, Choose an email app, Gmail, OneDrive, Save to OneDrive. So I've got Gmail on this device. I'm going to hit Gmail. I get my Gmail app. It automatically uh, is from the account that this device is set up with. It says to, it automatically filled in my school email address that I typed into um, the code, which I can delete if I want. It automatically also filled in the subject, which was my SDCE feedback, and it started the body with regarding your app and a new line. I also see below 
that there is an email attachment. So it did everything that I had programmed it to do. I want to say regarding your app, it's great. And then what I'll do is, because this is a real device connected with Gmail and everything, I'm actually going to click the, the send button. It says here sending message. And in a moment, my phone should beep that I got it in my inbox. But in my inbox, my real phone, I, uh, I got it right there at the top. Um, feedback. And what I wrote there, and the attachment. So I guess I had it on silence or something. But it did send the, it then. It's it, the app, the project, the class project was um, emailed. And I got it on my real inbox. If you were testing it, hopefully you you got it as well that you could test it was there anyone else able to test it in all the way that you did get an email so all of this is thanks to a new plugin that lets you send an email. This one, uh, this aspect of that plugin sends an email. That's the point of it. It sends an email. Uh, we're seeing the syntax. It's in a very specific way. It didn't quite work. Make sure you check your commas after each of these arguments. Maybe it'll be easier to read this way. But notice it's got each of them with a comma and a comma, and then the email, make sure it's in an array. I sent it again, and I got, I got the notification. So I sent it from the app, I got it in my inbox, I had the volume up this time, and you heard that I got it. So if I look in my inbox, I can look there, and I sent me the second one with the second subject, second content, and it sent it. Any questions on this, um, on this plugin so far? So, this same plugin can also be used to let the user select a way to share. One use case for this other way is free promotion. We're going to talk about marketing and such next time. But let's say at least one person downloaded the app, they really liked it, and they wanted to tell their friends and family about it. Um, the biggest social network in the planet right now is Facebook. Other very popular ones are YouTube, 
you might not think about it as a social network. I don't. But WhatsApp also has lots of users, like 900 million users. Facebook has about 1.8 billion users. YouTube also is in the like 900 million user range. So about a billion people use YouTube. Twitter, around 330 million people. Snapchat, 100, and 100 million people. So lots of people are using these social networks. So that's free advertising. When we talk about our social network lecture later on, we'll see why it's important for you to market in social networks. But one reason is someone downloaded my app, they really liked it, they wanted to let their friends and family know about it. I want them to have the opportunity to choose the network that they like to send it to friends and family. So based on this plugin, we also have the ability for them to select the network. Let's uh, set up another button on that About screen, and maybe we'll call it like Share the App, and then we'll write some code to let the person share the app. It's going to be very similar to what we wrote here. In the index file, we have contact the developer. I'm just going to copy that line and paste it and change it a little bit. Instead of contact the developer, we'll say share the app. So you can go back to the index file, share the app. That, of course, needs a unique ID, btn, we'll call it btn share. A new icon is an icon called action, which is like an arrow jumping out of a box to denote a user can take an action. href again points to nothing. Data role is again button. Alright, so we've got a button that will trigger the code back to the JavaScript. Uh, on my line 272, that's the end of my function email, so I'll give a note there, end function email, so that I can start a new function. A new event handler and a new function. Quotes, btn uh, share. That's what we call it, btn share. And then on click, this will be function share. And we will define the function fn share. This will be similar as before, but we invoke the share method. We have various um, parameters, but because we're not targeting directly an email, we have different parameters, and they will result again in a success or a failure callback. So we'll start off, it's the window object dot plugins dot so social sharing and then this time dot share simply share we had share via email to target the user's email account this one will let the user choose many options including their email account also
I'm going to break those parentheses apart, and then we're also going to have uh, the comment of what is in each of these lines. First we have message body, then message subject, attachments as a string in an array. So this is a little different. When we had the attachment on the email, it was simply the string. It was the path to the picture. In this case, we need to add a string, a path to the picture, but it's got to be in an array. So technically, we could attach more than one picture. If we're sharing over to Twitter, a tweet can include up to four pictures. So we can attach four images here. Facebook also lets you make albums have multiple pictures, so this wants it as an array of strings for your attachments. This is different here as well. Next we need um, a URL. Obviously, if unused, include null. So now there's a, there's a field here, there's an argument here uh, where we can attach a, a link. Um, we're going to see that, well, if we're going to share our app, if we're going to let people share our app to their WhatsApp or to their Twitter, um, it would be nice to also include a link to the app. Amazon and Google Play and iOS Store um, give you a unique address of your app so you can share it everywhere. And what we'll do is we will get a copy of an example app address and add it here so that this gets added to the person's tweet or Facebook post or whatever they chose. After the URL, then we get the usual callback, say success callback, or fail callback. Note, no final comma. So to actually fill it in, message body, we'll say, check out the MySDCE app. We don't know how the user is going to share this, so we can't assume that we can include HTML. We could on the email, because oftentimes an email can include HTML. But if this is going to be sent off to Twitter, Twitter doesn't accept HTML, and neither does Facebook and most social networks. So I can't um, assume uh, any characters here. Next line, subject. Well, this is another one that you can't assume, because in some networks you can add a subject as well as a message body. But for example, a tweet doesn't have a doesn't have a message subject, it just has the tweet. So whatever you write here, you have to assume some people won't see it. I'm going to say download my SDCE. Download the my SDCE app. It's a little redundant from the first line, but again, not everyone will see this line. Do we have any other extra pictures? Uh, org image. I can use that one as an example. So this is an attachment in an array. We'll have the array syntax. 
quotes we need to start from the www folder slash images slash org underscore image dot jpeg if you wanted more than one picture just add a comma and then in quotes we would do www dot images slash cat jpeg if we had another graphic these are all local images. If we had uh, an external image, then that would require the full path. So if I had it on a server, picture.com slash image slash cat jpeg. So it could also attach an online image. And I'm just using images, but these could be other kinds of attachments, although you can't usually attach it like a PDF to a Facebook post. You can up for the email. That's just fine. If we had some sort of um, PDF file or other kind of graphic or attachment that would work on the email, but it's better to be safe on the on the generic share because you don't know if it will be accepted or not. As a string, so a URL as a string. As a string, I would then include a link over to the app. Uh, here we can borrow the link of one of these existing apps. So if you go back to the browser, you go to Amazon.com. and search my SDCE. Get any one of these from a previous student. You can look at the top right corner, sort by newest arrivals. So let's say we were going to share my app here. This is the one I did. If you click there, There's an address at the top, but this very messy address could um, be full of characters that uh, break your string. So there's a safer address. Um, every item on Amazon has this short safe address. Most people don't know it exists, but you can find it under the share, the share button there. It's a share via email, etc. But if you click share, it lets you know this app has this link and then it's a very safe short address they changed their scheme it used to be amzn.com now it's a.co it's probably one of the shortest web addresses in the world a.co aco so that address and it does matter the capitalization that's the address that i'm going to borrow to include here. And then we will do the success and the fail pretty much the same so I'm gonna copy and paste that this um, success and this fail So those are the arguments for the um, 
for the share. Check your spelling. Make sure you've got those commas in the right place. And uh, I'm going to run it in my device so I can get the full effect. So I'm running my, uh, my device here on their about. I have the new share of the app. There's the action button. I hit that. Now here on, on Chrome it doesn't show it, but on my device then I get this sheet of possibilities and I have a lot of them. In this particular device it's saying share with Instagram, Gmail, Maps, Bluetooth, Twitter Direct Message, Google Plus, Hangouts, HP Print Service, OneDrive, Save to Drive, Street View, Tweet, Upload to Photos. So I have all of these possibilities. I'm going to go with Tweet. It still doesn't show it over there on Chrome. So then it pops over. It pops me over to my um, to my Twitter app. And what it did was it automatically filled in some of the body of my tweet. It filled in only the part that says, check out the MySDCE app. The part about download the MySDCE app, that's gone, because Twitter doesn't use a subject. It's also got an image attached. My org image has been attached to the tweet. And the, the link, the a.co image, has also been attached. I'm going to I'm just going to tweet it as is Oh, I forgot to say something early on when I was testing this. If you typed exactly what I typed, um, I had function result console log success success uh, whoops that should be success equals result if I'm passing in the result object that's what I'm trying to display in the console so sorry about that I put success I should have been result and same thing here result I could have of course called the object function success and then success would have passed through But if you'd like proof that that tweet went through, you can do this. If you open your web browser, you can go to twitter.com slash vmcink. This is a Twitter account that I have set up, vmcink. And the latest tweet is this right here, one minute ago. So this was a real tweet sent out. You can see it on this real account. There's the picture attached. Larger version. There's the A co um, link, which goes off to the Amazon link. And this is real. All the followers of this account would 
Let's see this as a real link. So if I, if I do it one more time, because I have other apps here, I'm going to do share again, tab is inactive. This time I, I'll do Instagram, I also have the Instagram app. If you don't see Instagram from the list, you don't have Instagram on the device. It depends on what, the, on what apps you have on the device. So if I hit Instagram, it takes me over to my Instagram app, and the very first thing I have to do is crop the photo. So I'm going to select portion of the photo next. Then the Instagram app takes over. I'm going to put a cool hipster filter on this and then have a vignette. And then also some tilt shift. Done on that next. And I'll put a subject here, SDCE. This didn't fill in anything for my uh, for Instagram it only passed in the photo because Instagram is a big focus on visuals so it only passed the photo into Instagram it didn't even bring in the message or the body that I wrote in the code so I still have to write something myself and I share that processing and shared so it got shared if you want to confirm that that got sent to the real Instagram you can go to the address Instagram.com slash T H E the VMC INK. Couldn't get VMC Inc. So the VMC Inc. And that'll show the photo that I just shared from the app. Instagram slash the VMC Inc. There it is. There's the photo that I uh, just loaded up. It's got the cool effect and vignette and all of that. And I just shared it 49 seconds ago. The text that I wrote. Now what quirk here is that it did uh, share it, but it kept me completely in Instagram. It didn't bring me back to my app. I have to to go back to the app. And my console output um, gave me some output success false. Uh, the documentation says that at the moment you don't get very good feedback out of your success or fail callbacks. This is coming from the success, but success is set to false, but it was successful. You just saw it on this screen over here for both Twitter and Instagram. Okay, so we're going to take our first break in a moment. But these two features of the same plugin or the tip of the iceberg to allow social sharing from the um, from the app. We have two use case scenarios here. One is a way to contact the developer and one is a way to share to get free advertising for the app. You then decide, well how do I how can I use this for my project? That's the great thing about all of these Cordova plugins. You have all of these features and then you just have to have the idea what do what how should I use the camera? Remember we played with the camera before how might camera work in this particular app or not. So with the sharing plugin, we have a few more abilities for the app. We're going to take a break and then we're going to do a little bit more, keep going and um, see what else we can do. So it's 7.23, we'll take a break to 7.33 and then we'll go on. <laughs> 